I was 19 years old, still living at home. They just wanted me gone. I was between jobs and I was opening up the classifieds one day, you know, the old way which we used to with actual newspapers. And there was a good quarter page ad for the Ringling Brothers Circus. Hello. Hey, what's up, Lyle? How's it going? Is this Will? This is Will. What is happening in the in the universe, Will? Man, there's so many things happening. So many things happening, and I have a big dilemma, which is, uh, do I talk to you about the life I had or the one I have now? Uh, well, I mean, why don't you tell me a little bit about both, if you if you want, of course. Yeah, um, for sure. So. Uh, let's see. Um, I guess the most interesting part of my past is when I literally ran away with the circus. How old were you when that so, happened? So, I was 19. And uh, just to preface this really quick, um, what happened was my dad had died a few years earlier, this is back in 98, 99, and um, my mom had remarried some guy really quickly, you know, like some blast from the past, and I was 19 years old, still living at home, um, my little brother, and just started butting heads with the new husband, and they just wanted me gone, and um, I was between jobs, and I was opening up the classifieds one day, you know, the old, the old way, which we used to with actual newspapers. And, uh, I want to say there was a good quarter page ad for the Ringling brothers in Barnum and Bailey circus. And I was like, what the hell is this? And it had all kinds of jobs, you know, like animal handlers, um, you know, veterinarians, you know, uh, just on and on and on. But, uh, you know, and, and uh, my mom and her new husband walked in and I was like, guys, what the hell is this? You have to look at this. And, you know, we had like a laugh for like 10 seconds, right? But then they were like, well, maybe you should do it. And I was like, <laughs> like, what are you talking about? You know, like, are you insane? And I mean, more or less, I'll just give you the quick version i mean they just wanted me gone like i said and um i very shortly you know for lack of other options and what to do you know in life even um just went down there to see what was going on and i got hired right away and within a couple days i was gone and on the road so um yeah i i linked up with the legit Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus for uh, about a year. Actually, I think it was a year to the date I was with them. Mm. And uh, yeah. what was that time like for you? Um, it started off very um, just like, wow, man, I'm doing something really wild. This is something, you know, once in a lifetime, maybe not even that, you know, chance you know, to actually do something crazy like this. But I saw it as just a way to, to travel a lot, you know, and, and to see different things. But um, so it started off very much, you know, like, oh, this is a new adventure, um, you know, meeting crazy people, doing crazy things. But, you know, um, as time went by, you know, being completely isolated, living on a train, working 80 hours hard labor you know every almost every day you know it just really got to me so you know i want to say close within you know a month or two before i actually left i was in a really bad state of depression and uh you know it's very hard to sleep on a train you know even when it's at a standstill because things are always bumping the damn train you know, and all the train cars are going boom, 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 you know, and moving around all the time. It's it's very hard to sleep. So, you know, it was it was it was hard. It was really, really hard. You know, I'm, I'm glad I did it, but it was, you know, it was not fun. And 
And how long did you say total you were doing that for? One year to the date. One year. And uh, what did you do when you got out? And you were about how old then as well? Mm, I was 21 when I got out. Mm, okay. Um, what did you do? Yeah. So I was well asking myself, I'm like, well, how do I translate like these like skills, which was basically setting up a whole production, you know, um, running props, running cables, rigging, you know, setting up the trussing. I'm like, well, how, how does this, how does this apply to my next thing? You know, I'm like, I, I don't know how this is going to work out, but it did. And I actually got a job, um, since I lo- live in SoCal, um, I got a job with a lighting company that does stage lighting and uh, mostly in the music industry. So, um, yeah, after I left that, I basically became a roadie and I traveled with a bunch of bands and did a lot of cool stuff for, I want to say, another three years after that. Hmm. And so you say that um, there's, a, there's a strong dichotomy between your life then and your life now because you you came in here asking which one you should tell me about what do you think are those big differences um well i'm like honestly i'm definitely back in like a depressive state um just because of the way things have gone um you know i uh i like had these incredibly adventurous jobs when I was young in my 20s, you know, and then, you know, got married and then was trying to figure out, okay, well, what do I do with the rest of my life now? Because she was not loving this whole like road life thing. Um, So I did like what I was supposed to do. Like I went to college, got a bunch of boring office jobs, you know, um, and completely forsake like you know my god-given talents and just did you know what we're told to do is you know adults it's just like you know go for money you know and just try and live the you know american dream and all that so long story short you know it uh i had a divorce a couple years back and lost everything you know that i had worked you know 20 years for you know the home you know and then uh everything else so i am back kind of like square one you know and it's a weird place to be at 44 it's a really weird place and especially in the year 2023 you know it's like things have changed a lot so um, that's where i'm at right now so when when did you say this divorce was uh 2021 2021 and uh in the yeah. past two years have you been out there trying to date anyone or do anything like that yeah actually that's kind of where my therapy needs <laughs> is right now um i yes i definitely dated a, a string of women um got back out there and just quickly learned you know like the whole games people play these days and like the lifestyles that people live these days. And I just feel like a relic of the, I feel like, yeah. Go into that for me real quick. The games that people play and the lifestyles. What do you tell me? Cause I assume what you mean is you're on the dating apps and you're seeing some stuff that makes you feel like, um, I mean, people have been calling into this show talking about polyamory and, uh, you know, fucking Mm. dogs and, sex dungeons and all sorts of things where I'm like, yeah, I I could see uh, if I were you, you know, getting back out there being um, Mm -hmm. feeling like you were a relic of the past. But from your perspective, what what have you seen that has made you feel that way? Um, Like the first thing on top of my head is just the shallowness of people these days. Um, The, you know, like I was brought up <laughs> where like, you know, you would pick a girl up on a date, you know, uh, 
you know, take her out, you know, kiss at the end of the night. And then, you know, you know, you might sleep together after three days or something like that. Like that was, you know, the, the status quo. So these days, I mean, people are giving it out on the first date and saying, but they want a long-term relationship. And it just seems like people are really confused about what they actually want. You know, and well, let me, I get, let me ask you this, Will. Let me ask you this first. Are you on yeah. the, are you on Tinder? Where, what are you on? I have, honestly, I've used all the apps at one What's, point or another. When you're on the apps, what age range are you, are you looking at here? Um, I have done, I want to say 30 to 44 or maybe okay. 45 even. So, I mean, I would, I wouldn't mind dating someone one or two years older than me. That's fine. It's not a big deal with my age. Okay. You know? All right. All right. Um, and so uh, you're, you're, hmm. And so you're. Feeling is there's a lot of shallowness. How many people have you actually like? Were you able to actually go on dates with anybody? Oh yeah, I've dated quite a few. Um, probably at least eight. You went on eight dates between uh, now and when you got divorced. Yeah, I've dated probably eight of them. You know, what, why, was there? Of was there a common theme as to why none of those worked out for you? Um, basically, like what I've been seeing is people are out there saying, "Oh, they want to meet their partner." You know, they want to, they want, you know, their soulmate. They want the long term relationship, and then you. Um, you know, you're you're telling them, okay, well, you want the same thing, so we're on the same page, right? Spend a week or two talking to these people, finding out everything about them. They find everything about you. It's exhausting. And then you meet up, and then you go on several dates, and then they're just like, well, you know, uh, you know, maybe I don't want to be in a relationship right now. So you're like, what was that all about? Like, why did I just waste all this time and energy? And, it, and I'm telling you, it's happened over and over and over and over again. But I did meet, unfortunately, one girl that I fell in love with. Um, and unfortunately, she's a textbook narcissist. Now, what um, makes you say that? Uh, okay, well, this isn't just a girl. And she's my own age, by the way. She isn't just somebody that takes a lot of selfies and is like, oh, I look so pretty. She's not bad looking, but, you know, it's it's a little overboard, you know. Okay. Um, but um, what makes me say that is she seems to keep a lot of secrets, is never completely forthcoming, you know, and I've asked her straight up, would you be my girlfriend? She'd be like, Yes. But then come to find out, well, she's still talking to a lot of people on the side and keeping things secret. And then, you know, um, out of nowhere, she'll do a breakup and be like, well, I'm going to step away for a while. You know, maybe we'll meet up again. And you're like, wait, will huh? let me, you know, let me and ask then, you this. Let me ask you this. Yeah. yeah. And do this is the whole thing. And if you don't want to get into it, we totally don't have to. But like. Yeah. Why? What do you think was the cause of your divorce? Um, the cause of my divorce, honestly, was we both married each other too young, and did not did not um, sow oats, you know, so to speak, and um, I don't regret it. We had an amazing child, you know, from that marriage and accomplished a lot. But, you know, just time definitely revealed, you know, that we were not um, compatible, you know, in, in several ways. And um, I think that was just honestly definitely the cause of it is just being married too young, too early um, and not having you know, really gone out there and seen what's out there. Well, it's, it's and interesting so, to me that you say that. Cause that, there, that is a totally, a th how old were you when you got married? 
we started seeing each other when I was 22. We got married at 24. Okay, so 20 years of marriage. That's that's pretty that's a that's a solid run. That's a good run. It's a solid run. Oh, that's yeah. a real good oh, run. Yeah. That's a real solid run. Um, but now you're back out there and you're like you you're like, "Oh yeah, dating so dating, by the way, you know, I, it sucks for everybody. It sucks for guys. It sucks for girls. It sucks if you're young. It sucks if you're mm-hmm. older. Actually, that's not true. If you are, no, if you're actually, if you're young and really, really attractive, it's probably, <laughs> but I wouldn't know. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, it sucks out there. So, what about... Uh, What's going on in the rest of your life, the professional life? Let's talk about that. Let's get a let's get a well-rounded picture of you. Um. Okay. So. Uh, so basically, I've been doing IT work for a while now, like a really long time. Um. I decided, you know what? You know, I'm getting old. It's getting competitive. Um. It just isn't fun keeping up you know, with all the changes in society and everything else, you know, just, it's just nonstop being beaten over the head, you know, when you work in IT. Um, And uh, so I did a stint in graphic design, which is, you know, what I would like to do more of because, you know, I have a whole artistic side, but um, I had a really shitty boss. So I had to go back into IT. The pandemic happened. And uh, I lost my job because apparently the company was going to lose money, but it turns out they actually made more money in the end. But regardless of that, I ended up getting a, the job I'm at now. And basically, I'm a call center supervisor right now. Manager, supervisor, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it sucks. Hmm. Did what does anything give you, the bills, uh, but did, does anything give you happiness in life right now? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, my kid. I have a really amazing kid. He's ten, going on eleven. Um, I get joy from making art, um, and yeah, I mean, those times I'm with my narcissistic, you know. Uh, partner (laughs) you know i'm i'm happy because we have a we go out we have a great time but it's just you know it's uh these kind of people have different personalities you know and then the next day she can be a completely different person when you say you're i'm sorry you're part i'm i'm sorry if i'm confused but when you say your narcissistic partner are you talking about your ex-wife or the person you're with right now the the girl i'm dating right now okay no, my, me, my, can I my ex, say my can, I, can I say something to you? So you're still yeah. dating this. This is the yeah. person who you said who you fell in love with, who you said was going to be your girlfriend. That, or is this a different person? Well, it's it's an on and off relationship. Yeah, okay. but yes, currently we are dating. Currently we're dating again. Okay. Um, just like can just this yeah. person that you're currently dating, who you're referring to as a narcissist, are they making your life? Are they in in general? In general, are they making your life better or worse? Mm, currently worse. Okay. Um. I mean, look, bro. Uh, it's it's, I, it's just it's just suspicion and stress, you I, know. Yeah. And that's and it's just part. It's part of the whole game yeah. that they do, and it's just you know I've accepted it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Why have you Why have you accepted it? Just because I know that that's part of her personality it's part of her you know uh psyche that's it's something that she's going to do and continue to behave this way and it's not something she can change about herself i don't think because she she needs the attention you know um and she will justify it by will is saying, will, no, i don't is like this, my i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna Will, is this, a, is this a sex thing? Is it like, is it like I'm afraid of not being able to have sex and being alone, and so I'm going to be with this person who 
is making me unhappy because I'd rather do that than be alone and sexless. Uh, that could be part, like a small part of it. That could definitely be, but okay. I genuinely, this, uh, that's I genuinely what I would have affection. Okay. And that leads into it too. I don't know why I, I said sex, but the sex and affection thing. Cause like, dude, I guess I don't, if you're, you, you don't want to be actively referring to the person that you are dating as a narcissist. That's that, that I don't think that's good. And I, and you don't even need me to tell you any of that shit. You already know that. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm glad that you have things in your life that are making you happy, like your kid and art and whatnot. But, I I I would I I hate for you to settle just because you don't want to go back out there. You settle with somebody who you mm-hmm. really don't like because that's just gonna make your life what that's gonna your life's gonna be way worse being with somebody who you refer to as a narcissist than being alone mm-hmm. and jacking off. Jacking off. You know what? I'm gonna say it, Will. I'm gonna say it, and I know you <laughs> know it, and I know the people out there know it. I'm gonna say it. So that everyone can hear me pretty loudly. I'm going to say what the people won't say. Being alone and jacking off is kind of awesome. Okay. I feel like the ripples of that is going out into the universe right now. The ripples but. of that are indeed going out in the universe right now. That's what that moment of silence was. Um, well, Will, what's the future look like for you? I believe my art is actually pretty good now. And I plan to pivot and doing more of, you know, the things I, that I want to do. You know, because I've spent these 44 years pretty much pleasing everybody else. And I think it's, you know, it's time to to do some self-love and start doing some of the things that, you know, I kick ass at. Good, man. Good. It seems like, um, it seems like you're, you actually are like really, you know, solid pockets of your life that are keeping you well afloat. You know, I'm glad you have a great relationship with your kid. I'm glad you feel confident in yourself. I feel like that's the most important thing. What do you make art? What do you make art about? Um, all different kinds of things. So, um, I've been doing a couple of landscapes. I'm starting to do some more like pop art. And um, yeah, I think I'm gonna do uh, a new painting pretty soon. I'm thinking any- maybe like an Edgar. Hmm. Do you have an art Instagram that you want to share? You don't have to if you don't want to. Uh, I have one I actually started not too long ago. It's, uh, sure, it's will.the.artist with an underscore. Wow, I'm surprised that wasn't taken. Even with the underscores and dots and stuff. Yeah. (laughs) Here, I'm going to go to it right now. What is it again? Thanks for that. Will dot the dot artist with an underscore artist and an underscore okay let's check this out oh all right we there we go we got your we got your first and last name that's out there okay that's okay is that cool with you i can bleep it out if 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 it's not Uh, that's fine Okay. I like this. This looks pretty cool. Who's that? Who's that? Is that David? I'm I'm going to sound like an idiot. That's not David. Who's that with the guitar? Yeah, it's uh, Martin Gore. Nice, man. Who's this girl? Uh, That is a girl I dated. She looks cool. And then this is uh, floor plans to a Walmart. What is this? (laughs) <laughs> uh, it's basically uh, a role playing uh, like map, architectural map. You know what, Will? You got a good life. 
Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Hmm. Is there, well, thanks for talking about all this stuff, man. I'm glad. Um, uh, do you do you have a real therapist that you talk to about these things? Uh, unfortunately, no, I just kind of do the stoic male thing and just kind of like, this is life, you know, could be worse. I do, I, I do the stoic male thing and I talk to a guy in a gecko suit about it instead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> As one does. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for calling Will and, uh, good luck to you in the future, man. And anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Yeah, uh, check out Alan Watts. He will start you on a good journey. Beautiful. Take care, man. Thanks for calling. All right, all right, bud. Bye. Oh crap! I just really he said in the in the call screening notes that he met God. I didn't get to ask him about that. I wonder if he met God on Tinder. Is God a 37-year-old woman on OkCupid? He is. You know why? Because he's all of us. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Thanks for calling, Will. Hello? Hello? What's up? Hey, is this Gek? Uh, yeah, man. How are you? I'm all right. Uh, I'm okay. I just, it's, just wanted to come on here, you know share some thoughts and whatnot what kinds of thoughts and feelings would you like to share so uh, i've been living with my brother for about uh, a year now and uh we, we moved out together he's a uh, he's 24 and i'm 20 and uh so it's just it's been it's been okay like you know we get along and everything and it's it's everything's fine there. I pay rent, he pays rent, and all that. But it's been a, a lot of times recently. I just I feel like he's um how, how do I word this? Like he feels like I he he's trying to have authority over me, you know? Mm. Like he's trying to he's just trying to be the bigger person in every situation and just. It's, it's weird. I don't, I haven't really talked about it with anyone. I don't know. I never really put it to words. I just, I saw you were streaming and I thought this would be the chance to really get it out there. So, but how it's old just, is he? it seems and like he has you? like, how old he, he's 24 and I'm 20. Okay. So he's trying he's to He's not like... that much older than me. All right. So you both pay equal rent on the house, but he's mm -hmm. still trying to like big time you. Yeah, it's really weird. Like he, it's like he took the role of our dad. Like as soon as we got out of the house, and I, it's, mm. is he is he reminding yeah. you of your dad? Oh, Oh, one hundred percent, hundred percent. What things is he doing yeah. to to alpha you around? That's a good way to put it. Alpha me around, <laughs> but uh, he like. So we, we have a weekly schedule of cleaning uh, where I do one week, I do stuff, and then he does the other stuff, and the next week we switch, right? There's been times where he'll, he'll, he'll tell me to, you know, do, he'll, he'll get, run down the schedule of, like, of what's going on, and just so much, like... It, it, the way he talks to me is just so talking down to me and even when I do what I'm supposed to do because I get everything usually done in like half hour maybe an hour well not everything but like majority of what I'm supposed to do and he he's like there's no how do I sorry uh, it's, let me ask you let me ask you something yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, this is clearly, and I get this. There's a lot of times in arguments and shit where you you just don't have fucking concrete examples and evidence, but you have the way you feel. I get that. I've been there before. Mm -hmm. Um, have you told your brother about this shit? Have you had a conversation with him? I've 
we've argued about it where like i'll tell him like he's just like our dad and he gets so pissed but like the way he gets pissed is just like our dad and he he gets he gets physical too and that really that was much physical. like our dad growing up yeah he hits me okay your brother's hitting you He's hitting me. He's 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 treating he's treating me like our dad used to do. Um, my dad was an old school. He grew he was fifty when I was born. He, he grew up old school in the in the seventies and eighties, and or whenever he grew up. But he grew up. He that's how he he wouldn't talk. Our dad wouldn't talk much about how he grew up. But you know that whole thing where you kind of. When you grow up and have kids, you you sort of have patterns with when how you were raised. Yeah. So Matthew, you heard, you um, heard that? All right. So yeah. so what you're what you're getting at here is that your dad would fucking hit you and hit your brother, and now you're mm-hmm. and now you're living with your brother, and now your brother's hitting you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you guys are you guys are adults. You're twenty and twenty four. Or or full on adults, full jobs and shit. Okay. Like I, I work as a plumber. I've been I've been doing it two years now. Like it's a shitty job. Ha, mm-hmm. Funny, but uh, but it it pays the bills. It pays my half. And I like your I like your way of um, bringing levity into the situation with a joke. Yeah, uh, I I try to you know, it could be worse. I I, I, uh, I it could be w- way worse. But all right, Matthew, uh, how long have you been living with your brother for? Living with him for, what is it? It's, uh, what month? It's July, so that'd be a year and four months now. A year and four months. A year and four months. Okay, so it's been a year and four months. And how like many, we, we the, tried oh, moving out. He, he moved out the second he hit graduation. He moved yeah. out and did his whatever he did. And so, so how, long, I, how many times the over the course, thing. how many times over the course of that year and four months does, did he, was he hitting you? It didn't, in the beginning, it was fine. Like, like the first, I'd say like six months, it was like, okay. You know, we'd get into arguments. Brothers do that all the time. We'd always, we're not like the closest brothers in the world, but, mm-hmm. but Matthew, know, we, Matthew, we got along and Matthew, yeah, yeah. How many times in the year and a half, in the the year and four months, did he hit you? I'd say at least like once to twice a week. Once to twice a week. A week, yeah. There maybe there'd be a week where he didn't. Maybe there'd be weeks where it'd be more. But yeah. all right, Matthew. Yeah. Um, hmm. And you haven't told you. I'm, I'm I'm the first one you're telling about this. I pulled my cat. <laughs> okay, Matt. Uh, well, I want to yeah. let me say a, a few things. One, Matthew, you seem like a real nice, real sweet dude, and I'm really, re- I'm, I'm, I feel bad because you had to. It sounds like you had to go through this fucking twice because, like, it sounds like your dad was not fucking super awesome, and then it was like finally you're 18, think- you can get out of the house, and then now you're living with a mini version of your dad. And, like, bro, I don't know. I feel bad for your brother, too, because, like, I'm sure he, you know, is hurting as well. But, like, at 24 years old, you got to you got to you got to work out what the fuck is going on with you and not be taking it out on your little brother because you seem like a nice guy. So, um, yeah, and you don't deserve. And also, you, you're, you're 20. You're making your own money. You're, you should be allowed. You 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 deserve to be able to live in a safe chill place where you're not dealing with your brother being an asshole so um yeah i mean there's lots of things here that i'm thinking about i appreciate that man that means Uh, that means a lot so let's well let's we'll we'll, let's start with gecko solutions and then uh uh, i will refer you and then i'll refer you out to other uh uh solutions but are you are you on a lease yeah, with I, this guy? Are you, are you are you are you on a lease? Are you on a lease with him? No, yeah, the the house is in fully in his property. Oh wait, it's so fully it's fully in his name too. It's in his name, so he he owns it. 
it's in his name. He's letting me stay and pay half. Is he so he bought it and you're helping him pay the mortgage? Yeah. Did he buy it or was it like a family? I'm not thing? too good at the house stuff. It's just it's it's a wait what did 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 he buy it or did your dad give it to them? Our, it's in our dad's name, but then oh. now it's been moved to his name. Our dad passed away two years ago as well oh, when um, I was uh, just graduating. I'm sorry to hear that, man. Um, so your dad. It's, that's, that's what I was thinking. So your dad passed away and then gave the house to your mm-hmm. brother. And and in the will, he gave it specifically to your brother? Yes. Have you ever... Dude, I, I'm... Did you, have you ever had, like, a lawyer help you out with this kind of shit? With the, with the I have not. I have not looked into lawyers. Okay. Um, but uh, this conversation is starting to think that I need one. Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah, I've, I've think, never been I, bro. I think, I think about, here's the thing. I'm down. I'm uh, I'm totally I'm totally down to uh, talk with you for a little bit more about this. But you absolutely should go talk to a lawyer because your bro. I don't. Your brother could be doing some kind of like shady shit where like maybe your dad actually left both of because if your dad left you shit and your brother is just like if he's alphaing you around the house and hitting you and shit, you know it. It, mm-hmm. I, it wouldn't. I wouldn't. It wouldn't be beyond me that he's you know, taking ownership over this house that, you know, a percentage of could rightfully belong to you when you just didn't have the resources to figure that shit out. And I feel for you. I know that getting a lawyer is a whole expensive thing. Um, all right. Yeah. So you pay, you pay, money is like, you know, plumbing and, and, and pay are you, you're paying, or you're paying rent to your brother. Yes. I'm paying to help out the mortgage and it's, uh, also, like power and whatnot, and none of it is in and your name. I pay. Not that that I know of. None of it is in my name. But right. like, I, I obviously I wasn't going to be here forever. I just thought for the meantime. But it's been you know a year and six months now. So where do you work? Four what's, months, your, what's, your, what's your what's your what's your job? What's your job? Uh, plumbing. Uh, we go around. You know, people call in. You know, having trouble with leaks and whatnot, okay. and. Uh, uh, oh shit! What time is it? Home? It's eight oh six. Do you have to go um, to work right now? I don't have to go to work. I have dinner reservations with a friend of mine that I haven't seen in a long time. And now that I think that we've had this talk, I might bring this up with them. Yeah, you should talk to people. Like, I, very I, close I have a lot of questions for you, but let's. Okay, so you, are you making decent money being a plumber? Um, it, it could be better, but like, it's not the worst. So like. Okay, I'm okay. I, I'm, I'm making it okay. All right, because like, you I, should. I have some emergency I, bro, money, and I have all that. Bro, like, get the fuck out of that place first. I'm gonna your get brother out of sounds there, yeah. like he's that... just making life hell for you. And if you can afford it, go. You know, get get with a roommate, or if you can afford a fucking studio or one. I don't know where you live at or what you make or any of that stuff, but like, yeah, try to get a different housing situation, and then. Like, I mean, hey, you probably have, uh, you should talk, dude, uh, can I ask you a question? Why haven't you talked to anybody besides me yeah. about this? Honestly, it's more of a pride thing. Mm-hmm. Like, and I also just never had really been excusing it for a while at the same time, too, so... And after t- and All after right. talking, man, to I gotta me, go. I'm I'm gonna be late here in about 15 minutes. But, you gotta go. Wait, you don't. Um, we can't. Ah, shit. You don't want to finish this conversation. It's okay if you gotta fucking do it. I I really want to, dude. I've been waiting here like 45 minutes, but I I don't want to miss this dinner at the same time. All right. Well, um. But I I do want to say thank you, man. I I, I really appreciate this, and it's really okay. nice talking to you. D- sw- swallow your pride. Go talk to a lawyer. Talk to your friends. Don't don't be don't 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 feel the need to be prideful about this, man. Like you're getting you're getting fucked yeah. over, and you're a nice guy, and you don't deserve that. And so you should go talk to a lawyer and and exp- mm-hmm. everything you just told me. Go tell him and see what they can do for you. All right, I'll, All I'll right. do that, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna eat I'm gonna eat the shit out of this dinner for you, man. All right, go eat the shit out of some dinner. Okay, bye, Matthew. All right, dude. Have a good night. You too. Damn that poor fucking guy. I hope he talks to. I don't. I, this is some shit where like, 
you know, he I'm I'm too stupid to know what his options are in that, but almost certainly sounds like his brother is doing some shady shit with the will. Um and even if he's not even even if the dad was like I give everything to the brother, he still got he still definitely got some case against this guy if he's, you know, fucking assaulting him and all that shit. So uh Damn, I wish you could have talked for longer. I have so many more questions, but ma'am. I hope I I mean if I was the first person that he talked to about this thing, I hope that it it, it inspired him to talk to other people about it cuz like that's the thing, right? Sometimes you don't need cuz he didn't I don't even cuz A he, when he mentioned pride, it was like A he's feeling prideful about it and B it's like he might not even cuz he's not getting feedback from other people. He might not even be aware that, you know, things are fucked up. So hopefully he talks to his friend over dinner and it gives him a better bigger um perspective on this. But uh thanks for calling Matthew and good luck to you. <laughs>